Hello and welcome to the Oracle Apex Tutorial 9 Integrating JavaScript Video Training Exercise brought to you by MS Consulting. On the screen is a brief list of assumptions and requirements for this tutorial, as well as the location of a full article with in depth information that we will be covering. Apex allows for two primary methods to integrate JavaScript into the applications. The one that we are going to focus on is in the HTML headers. You can also reference JavaScript files in the page template settings. But what we're going to do here is we're going to log into Apex first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you where you can go to add these scripts in the HTML header information, since that's where we're going to be focusing on in this tutorial. So I'm just going to go into my application builder and I'm just going to pick a random application just to show you because you can do this in any application. I'm going to click on one of my pages. And on the left hand side under page rendering under the page area we're going to click the edit page attributes and once this comes up we're going to scroll down to our HTML header and in this area here you can put one or more scripts in and that will be make those scripts available to anything on this page so I'm going to cancel out of this the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly how to interface with uh, Apex applications as you know many of the items in Apex we give formal names to so we can reference them across pages you can also reference those names in JavaScript. As you can see here, in this short example, we have the P1 first name, which is the formal item identifier, not the label, for a given item in the application. And we're able to access that in JavaScript via this call, the document.getElementById. So using those two is how we can actually talk to Apex directly. So we're going to build a little example here. So we're going to go create. And create an application. We're going to call it JavaScript example. And the rest of the defaults on this page are OK. So we'll click Next. and we're going to add a report and form and we're going to drive it off of the OEHR employees table and the implementation is going to be classic and we're going to add the page here and we need to change the name of the form page so we're going to click on the the form, which is the page number two. And I'll recenter this a little bit here. And we're going to change the page name to be update form. Then we'll click apply changes. And we'll make sure the change takes there. And we'll click next. One level of tabs. We don't need any shared components. The authentication and other options here are all okay as they are. So we'll click next. Now we're going to use theme two. Go next. And then we'll verify our choices and click create. And we're actually going to be adding a couple of things to this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run the application so we can show you what it does. We're going to log in. And as you can see, here's the current data that's driven from the table. And you can click on any of the edit icons on the left to get to the update form, which is right here. Now we're going to make some changes to this. So we're going to go to edit page two. We want to make it so that you can't add a new employee without a last name. So we're going to go to our page attributes. I'm going to scroll down and you'll see now that there's already a 
JavaScript in here for uh, confirming pressing of the delete button. So we're going to come down to this last script, this closing script tag, and we'll press enter to get on a new line, and then we'll paste in our first script. Okay. This script is available in the full article. And we'll click apply changes. And now what we need to do is we need to link our items to that script. So we're going to go to our P2 last name text field. And down here where it says HTML form element attributes, we're going to put in the command that will call that script. We'll click apply changes. Now if you just click the run here, you'll see that it takes you back to exactly where you were, which doesn't really help us. So we're going to click the application ID down at the bottom, in this case 112, and I'm just going to click run right there so that we actually run it from the start of the application again. I'm going to come over here to the side and I'm going to click create. This would normally be what you do to, to enter a new record. If you highlight the last name or just put the cursor there and then try and click create, we get our little JavaScript box that says this field must contain a value. That's one way you can perform some validations using JavaScript. JavaScript can be called from buttons or from uh, on load processes as well as a couple of other things. So we're going to go back to edit page 2 and we're going to enter another script here. So we're going to go to our edit page attributes, we're going to scroll down to our header we're going to go again to the last script line, hit enter, paste in a new script, and we're going to scroll up and hit apply changes. What this one is going to do is this one is a little more complicated and what it's going to do is it's going to gray out a field based upon the setting of another field. So we're going to scroll down on the master page to P2 department ID and we're going to make a couple changes here. We're going to change the HTML form element. We're going to go apply changes. Then we're going to go back down to department ID. And we're going to change this to select list. You'll see under the display as a bunch of these little links here. These are for popular, commonly used selections, and by clicking one like I just did, it changes it to select list, and you don't have to scroll down through the large list. We're going to scroll down to list of values. We're going to make sure that display, val display null is set to no, and we're going to put in our command to make our list of values. Ordinarily, it's recommended to create your list of values over in the shared components section and then just reference them by name that's best practice. This is this works, but best practice is to do it over in shared components. So we click apply changes now that we've done that. And now we're going to go to edit our page attributes once again. And we have to make two changes. The first thing we need to do is here under display attributes, we need to make sure that we set it to do not focus cursor. and then down here in the HTML body attribute, not the header, in this case it's the body, we need to put the command so that when the page loads it runs this script once. We'll go apply changes, then we'll click run, and you'll see now that department ID starts as administration and the commission percentage is grayed out because administrators don't make a commission in this example. That's just some of the ways you can integrate JavaScript into your Apex applications. We hope you found this tutorial useful and we look forward to seeing you again.